Let's give this guy indestructible. And I think destroy might still wipe them. I'm pretty sure. No! Uh, we are good. What a new mistake that I don't know that. This can come in tapped. And that is game. Oh my gosh. That. Hey everybody, welcome back to Hello Good Game. Thanks for watching, and if this is your first time tuning into the channel, make sure to subscribe, and you're going to be entered in to win half a million gems, you guys. 500,000 gems just for subscribing. It's free to enter. It's as easy as that. It's just my way of giving back a little bit to each and every one of you who've helped support and grow this channel to what it is today. With that all being said, we are playing some Brawl today. Brawl days ends soon, so we're going to juice that lemon for all we can while we wait for Theros. We are playing Kenrith, the Return King, uh, and in my opinion, he is the true Brawl King. Some people say Golos, but uh, I don't know. I really like Kenrith a little bit more than Golos. I understand Golos brings land, so he's reducing the diminishing returns of him being removed and coming back into the battlefield because he's helping wrap you. But Kenrith is just so much cooler in my opinion. He's got all the bang and abilities um, that you just gotta love. So let's get into the deck and break it down card by card by card. Kenrith, the Return King. You can pay a mountain. All creatures gain trample and haste until end of turn. You can pay two mana, including one forest. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. You can pay three mana, including a plains. Target player gains five life. You can pay four mana, including an island. Target player draws a card. And you can pay five uh, mana, including a swamp. Put target creature from a graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control. So this does basically everything for us. It's really cool to have all that utility uh, accessible whenever you want from your command zone. We've got only one drop. It is a giant killer. We're using this strictly for chop down, which is a three cost spell. Destroy target creature with power four or greater. Or he's, him himself is the one drop. He's a one two and you can pay two to tap target creature by tapping him. So that's really cool just to shut down that big attacker if our opponent has it. Moving on to our two drops. We have a disenchant, destroy target artifact or enchantment, glass casket. When glass casket enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls with converted mana cost three or less until glass casket leaves the battlefield. Assassin's trophy, destroy target permanent and opponent controls. Its controller may search their library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield, and then shuffle your or shuffle their library. So they're getting to ramp a little bit, but you do get that instant speed removal for two, which is super helpful. Arcane Signet, you can tap it, add one mana of any color that's in your commander's identity. Golden Egg, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Pay one, tap it. You can add one mana of any color, or pay two, tap it, sacrifice it, and gain three life. Guild Globe, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card, pay two mana, tap it, sacrifice it, add two mana of any different colors. Dance of the Mance, uh, this is in our two drops, but it should be really in our 10 drop uh, or six drop. Uh, return up to X target artifacts and or non or enchantment cards, each with converted mana cost X or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. If X is six or more, those permanents are four, four creatures in additional they're, sorry, in addition to their other types. So that's really cool, and that's going to go down here with our big boys. Moving on to our three drops, we have quite a few of them. Brazen Borrower, this has Petty Theft for two, return target non-land permanent, and opponent controls to its owner's hand, and then you can play him as the creature later on, Flash Flying, and he can only block creatures with flying, uh, which is really cool for the fact that he is Flash and is a flyer with three attack. We have Murderous Rider, destroy target creature, Planeswalker, and uh, we're going to lose two life when we do that to pay for that. And then he himself has lifelink. And when he dies, you're going to put him into our library on the bottom. So that's quite cool as well. Prison Realm. When it enters the battlefield, exile target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. And then scry one as well. Gideon Backblade. This is a planeswalker. Uh, he's four loyalty tokens when he enters. Plus one. Up to one other target creature you control gains your choice of vigilance, lifelink, or indestructible until end of turn. Minus six, exile target non-land permanent. And then as long as it's your turn, Gideon is a 4-4 human soldier with indestructible, which is dope. Drive the Carnarium, all creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Uh, creatures that die this way are going to be exiled. So that's great. Teferi Time Rattler, each opponent can only cast spells anytime they could cast a sorcery. 
and plus one until your next turn. You may cast sorcery spells as if they have flash and minus three return up to one target artifact, creature, or enchantment to its owner's hand, and we get to draw a card. Mortify, destroy target creature or enchantment. Both of Kaya. When it enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to any target, and we gain three life whenever an opponent attackify attacks a creature. Or sorry. Oath of Kaya. When it enters the battlefield, deal three damage to any target, and you gain three life. Whenever a planeswalker you control is attacked by one or more creature, uh, your opponent is going to take two damage, and you're going to gain two life. So that's really cool. Deafening Clarion. Choose one or both. Deal three damage to each creature. Creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn. Chromatic Lantern. Lands you control have tap for one of any mana, so it fixes our mana. And then it itself is a mana rock. Mana Geode is a mana rock as well. And then when it enters the battlefield, we're going to get to scry one. Moving on to our four drop. So getting a little heavier here. Smothering Tith or Teeth, Tithe, Tithe. <laughs> we could call this Smothering Titty for you guys who have been a, a fan of that pronunciation. Whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two. If that player doesn't, you create a treasure token. Ritual of Soot, destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three or less. Doom foretold, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-land, non-token permanent. If that player can't, they discard a card, they lose two life, you draw a card, you gain two life, and you create a 2-2 token with vigilance. Then you sacrifice Doom foretold. Kaya's Wrath, destroy all creatures, you gain life equal to the number of creatures destroyed this way. Death Sprout, destroy target creature, search your library for a basic land card, then put it into the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Outlaws, Mermit, at the beginning of your upkeep, choose one at random. Create a red and white creature token with the following characteristics. It's a 3-1 with Trample and Haste. It's a 2-1 with Lifelink and Haste. Or it's a 1-2 that when it enters the battlefield, it deals 1 damage to any target. Moving on to our 5 drops here. Almost done. Golos, Tireless Pilgrim. When it enters the battlefield, we get to search our library for a land card. Put it onto the battlefield and shuffle our library. We can also pay 7, exile the top 3 cards of our library, and play them this turn without paying their mana cost. Pretty cool unless you pull lands. Time wipe, return a creature you control to its owner's hand, then destroy all creatures. Awesome. Nico Bolas, Dragon God. Uh, it has loyalty abilities of all other planeswalkers on the battlefield, which is neat, so it's kind of one of everything that's around. Then plus one, you draw a card. Each opponent exiles a card from their hand permanently, uh, or a permanent they control. Sorry. Uh, minus three, destroy target creature or planeswalker. Minus eight, each opponent doesn't who doesn't control a legendary creature or planeswalker loses the game. And then finally, but obviously not least, find Finality. Uh, we're rocking Finality here. You may put up to two 1-1 one, one counters on target creature you control, then all other creatures get minus four, minus four until end of turn. Planar Cleansing, destroy all non-land permanents. Garrick the Huntsman, create two, 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 two wolves, uh, and when they die, you're going to put a loyalty counter on Garrick, and then minus three, destroy target creature, draw a card, minus six creatures we control, get plus three, plus three, and have Trample. Casualties of War, we all know this card. Destroy one or more artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker. God, Pharaoh, statue. Spells our opponents cast cost two more to cast. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses one life. Ugin the Infallible. Colorless spells you cast cost two less to cast. Plus one, exile the top card of your library face down. Uh, look at it, create a 2-2 two -two colorless spirit creature token, and then when that leaves the battlefield, you get to draw the card you exiled. Minus 3, destroy target non-land permanent, or sorry, destroy target permanent. Uh, that's one or more colors, which is basically everything. Realm Cloaked Giant, uh, destroy all non-giant creatures for 5, and then Vigilance 7-7 seven, seven, for 7. And then, of course, we talked about Dance of the Mats. Let's get our big old head out of the way here, and let's talk lands. Um, we're not going to really be able to see them anyways. We have a Command Tower, Temple of Mystery, Breeding Pool, Temple Garden, Temple of Triumph, Sacred Foundry, Stomping Ground, Temple of Malady, Overgrown Tomb, Blood Crypt, Temple of Epiphany, Steam Vents, Watery Grave, Temple of Silence. Oh my gosh. Godless Shrine, Hollowed Fountain, Four Swamps, Four Plains. So we are all over with land. We've got them all in here. There is enough land here to make your mom cry. Uh, or at least when she sees your MasterCard statement. <gasps> Oof. With that all being said, let's talk strategy here. Uh, I'm sure you could figure it out, but there is a lot of removal in the deck. It's focused around removal and then a couple of really cool win conditions. Uh, we also have a lot of mana ramp. So phase one, ramp out, right? Phase two, destroy all the opponent's creatures. Phase three, hit those win conditions. So let's talk about the cards. Obviously, we have uh, the, the mana ramp within... Um, 
the mana geode, the chromatic lantern, the golden egg, the guild go globe, those help us draw as well. Golos helps ramp, helps ramp, smothering a tithe helps ramp. So a lot of ramp there. And then we have a lot of removal. Giant Killer, Cry of the Carnarium, Oath of Kaya, Planar Cleansing, Casualties of War, Round Cloak Giant, Assassin's Trophy, Glass Casket, Disenchants, like there's so much removal. Kaya's Wrath, Doom Foretold, Death Sprout, right? Like Ritual of Soot, Time Wipe, so much removal. And then Wind Conditions, Outlaws, Mermit, Nico Bolas, Ugin the Infallible, uh, Garrick the Cursed Huntsman, kind of Golos maybe if you get lucky, right? Um, Dance of the Mats, Kenrith himself. So it's kind of like a control deck, but maybe not a very good control deck if you face other control decks. If you're facing just a creature deck, this deck is going to be banging. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it, a lot of luck with it. We did get boxed out a couple times, and we've got uh, some pretty interesting footage for you guys today. So with that all being said, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel to win 500,000 gems, and then sub to us on Twitch if you're interested in winning a Samsung Chromebook. And uh, yeah, more importantly than both of those things, I hope you guys can have a very uh, enjoyable day, etc. right? Um, do those tasks you love to do, get those rounds of magic in, and uh, hopefully you guys are all theory crafting for Theros. We are uh, every morning, 6 a.m. PST on Twitch, so you can jump in there if you wanna help us theory craft for the next couple days. And uh, we do have some big news. We did get invited by Wizards of the Coast for their Theros Beyond Death pre-release streamer event. So be sure to follow the YouTube channel and our Twitch channel for all of your early access Theros goodies. Um, and yeah, I'm just so grateful that they invited us and I'm looking forward to partaking. So with that all being said again, thanks for watching and have a great day, guys. Take care. Aruga! Welcome back, guys. We're going to play some Brawl. Everybody knows Kenrith is the king of Brawl. And we've got a ton of sweepers here today. And we're really going to make our opponent pay for every turn as well, I think. We could draw that fourth land. We're laughing. We have the scry off the start. And it should get us there. Mm, no. Much too early on for that. Enters tapped. We've got no play for two. Wolf. We have wiped at six, at five. We do have the instant removal. Hopefully this will generate the land for us next turn. And then we can sweep. It does, that's good. We don't have to pay life for any more land. And we wouldn't have to anyways. Smash the field with our Realm Cloaked Giant. And I would suspect he's gonna let us have a secondary token, which is really ramping us ahead. Get rid of the land. We're going to play our Realm Cloaked Giant as a creature. 
and then we're going to time wipe it back to our hand on our next turn here. Interesting. We got plenty of land. That's great. Activating our time wipe. Giant back to our hand. Ending our turn. And uh, from this point, we can really do whatever we want. We're going to get our Outlaws Marmot out. Playing our Cleansing. We can basically forget about. So it's not a legendary, which is really great. Kenrith is, but he's going to need a little more than that. Just hitting us with the damage. We are down to 11, so we're going to need to be mindful of that. Um, One damage to any target. We may as well hit his Soren. Cry scoops this guy up. Let's play our casualties, though. Planeswalker, land, creature. Here is our creature, and here is our land. Auto pay. That's going to spice things up a little bit, right? Now we still have the attacker on the field, and that is a game. Woof. In and out. All right, Krenko. So more dirty creatures. This is going to be good for us, hopefully. Maybe not. Definitely Clarion saves the day if we can get our lantern out. Oof, 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 oof. The land is tricky, you guys. We need to find a plains or a mountain. That's not it. We need to dig for land. It's very important that we pull land. Robber of the Rich is gonna get a draw, and if he draws our land, Okay, 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 okay. This is okay. Not the end of the day. Turn four, we have our sweeper. Could be worse. It could be worse. What do you get here? Okay. If we can keep Krinko down on the three level, we're going to be good for his strength, for his defense. <laughs> Takes my time wipe. Plays his Amber Cleave on Krinko. Oh my god, which saves him from whatever we wanted to do. He's just going to put it over there if we don't. Oh my god, you guys. We have four available. Nice. Sucks for us. We're going to get beat down next turn. Getting hit for 6, 7, 8 at the minimum.
Okay, so it's a scoop on his draw. That's good. I wish I could give a lifelink to some of my creatures, but uh, that's all we've got for sauce. We're going to play the creature and start giving him lifelink with our Gideon, rather than hold the removal. We got to get away from 7. Seven's too low. Probably just going to see his Krinko hit here. No, he goes Banner. He wants to go deep. He's being greedy. Oh my god, but he gets the War Boss. So we gotta take the trade, this sucks. He's got trampled too, right? Oh my god. Let's go ahead and scoop up his war boss. Ended here. I don't know, man. We're sitting on four. Hopefully we draw land and get either our Outlaw's Mermanite out or our Kenrith. Either way, it looks very bad. Especially now that he's got two creatures. Finality would save us. But it's still, it's not going to be enough. And now he gets to uh, put his Ember Cleave on his Rimrock Knight. Good game. We accidentally declined our land draw. But it doesn't matter. That's going to be game anyways. Wow. Alright, you guys. Let's see if we can get one more win in before we close the day. Uh, it appears we're going up against Dovin, which is not going to be good. I repeat, not going to be good. We're going to mulligan here. We do get a free mulligan. We'll keep this. Uh, looks a lot better, I don't want to brag, but that's a good mulligan. We're going to have a hard time here, though. A very hard time. We are a creature-based deck, and our opponent is definitely not playing creatures. This is okay though, he went in with his Dovin, so we know there's no counter. And we are allowed to get our Outlaw out. Which should help a little bit. Obviously we have to avoid Brazen Borrower. Imperium Eagle in the house. You have to excuse my phone. Healer Hawk as well. We have four this turn, going to five. Let's hit Dovin. Right, one, two, three, four. This would be five. We're going to tap that. Or do we take damage this turn and do it next turn? No, let's do it now. Right? Getting rid of that Imperium Eagle. Just is so good, making all his flyers that much stronger. We have another wipe. We have our Outlaw out. And we have Kenrith, so we're, we're sitting pretty, I think, here.
Right, let's just kill his creature here. That's probably our best option. Gideon is good. If we draw it, we can play it. No attacks. We're going to leave it to defend. Our opponent does have a lot of cards in his hand. That's going to be the only uh, problem here, right? Putting out those creatures. You gotta respect it. It's a good thing we got rid of that eagle. Oh, an unbreakable formation. Ouch. So we are going to block here because it's gonna die next turn anyways. He has indestructible. I will lend you my Let's give this guy indestructible. And I think destroy might still wipe them. I'm pretty sure. No! Uh, we are good. What a noob mistake that I don't know that. This can come in tapped. And that is game. Oh my god. Gosh, that is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Gideon. And uh, a pretty cool Brawl deck for the most part, especially when you're playing against creatures and not counters. Hey everybody, that's our video for the day. Don't forget to like and comment to support this video and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in winning up to 500,000 gems. We've got like 50 odd spots left uh, before our phase three giveaway triggers. So be sure to jump in that while you still can. If not, there's still going to be plenty of time for you to win more gems in the future. Uh, and also make sure to subscribe to us on Twitch. You will be entered in to win a Samsung Chromebook. Uh, so you can go ahead and check that video out as well. We have videos for both of the giveaways. If you're learning or if you're looking to learn more about the details, uh, etc., just go to that. That way I don't have to do this spiel each time. With that all being said, it was a pleasure playing Magic which with each and every one of you today. Be sure to check us out every single morning, 6 a.m. Uh, PST on Twitch, where we play for one to two hours, maybe three hours if we've got nothing going on for the day. Recently, we've been theory crafting for Theros. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, cracking some packs with you guys in a few days. So take care and have a great day.